Hail, adventurer! Welcome. I was about to share with all of you the tales from my games. Tales of death. Well, at least the 12 most memorable deaths from campaigns in recent years. Yes, uh, at the request of my players, I am sharing certain stories tonight. Stories that show off our stupidity. I want it to be said ahead of time, I do not set out to kill player characters. I just don't hold back and let the dice fall as they will. I also tend not to change encounters in the middle of them if it's too hard on the players. Uh, generally speaking, it's up to them to realize that it, they can't win and to find a way out. And I'll let you know when that works out. Okay. Perhaps the first death is uh, one I'm least proud of. Uh, well, I'm not proud of any of these, but you get the point. One of my groups was having a lot of problems getting comfortable with role-playing. So I asked an old colleague of mine if he would join in on our games and kind of lead, lead by example. So he goes, okay, okay, sure, sure. He rolls up a character by the name of Simon Ferocious, a uh, sort of a punk rock rebel sort of vibe in a fantasy world. Uh, we spent a lot of time creating the character and tailoring the backstory to make sure it made sense. It was great. Simon Ferocious shows up, pisses off the party, is challenged by a villain to a wizard's duel. Simon Ferocious swiftly turns down the wizard's duel and insists on regular melee combat, of which he runs straight in. Once in combat, he is double crit by crocodiles. Double crit being a house rule in my games that state that if we are playing Pathfinder and you roll a natural 20 on a confirmation roll, you get to roll another time for it, uh, basically exploding criticals. It's awesome. So, a drink for Redford. Sorry, Simon Ferocious. Redford was his next character. Okay. Uh, oh, this is another great story. Stroud versus the Prismatic Wall. So, uh, Stroud was actually played by the same character who played Simon Ferocious. Uh, he, this time around, he's a paladin, a no-nonsense sort of man who views the party as his family. Uh, his special power is that he can heal himself repeatedly while leeching the damage off of other players. So he functionally heals from a distance. It's really cool. So uh, they come across a prismatic wall. For those who don't know, it's basically a death. And our party wizard rolls to identify it, and he goes... He knows it's lethal, but what he says comes across as, oh yeah, it'll hurt really badly. Stroud's character, or player, to his credit, goes, well, I don't know what a prismatic wall is in character, I do out of character, but he just said it's going to hurt real bad, so he walks directly into it and dies. A toast to Stroud. Ah, God. All right, Ankita doesn't go in the tunnel. Oh, goodness. So Ankita was a fighter? No, a blood rager, so a barbarian with magic, uh, who could double in size, right? He liked to use enlarged person. In fact, he was permanently enlarged. He was a huge monster, and he had a giant axe. And he would go around, and he'd fight off these monsters, and he was very brave. He was a soldier through and through. Uh, the party realizes that they're up against some powerful odds in the form of carnivorous woolly mammoths. So they hide in a tunnel where the mammoths can't get into. Plus, the party has firearms. They can just take cover in the tunnel and shoot the mammoths down at their leisure. Ankita, in all his glory, says, No, that's a stupid idea. I'm going to fight these mammoths like a man. And he gets crushed. Beneath the boot of two undead carnivorous mammoths. A toast to Ankita. 
Oh, God. All right. Uh, Bakken versus the T-Rex. This one's very interesting because Bakken didn't actually die. The party expended a resource called Hero Points to make sure he stayed alive. So uh, Bakken is a dwarvish samurai, right? Uh, he's shaved his beard. He just has this really long mustache. He carries around a polearm and a sword, and he has this cool uh, uh, squire the character that he keeps around. He's a very strong, stoic, and silent sort of fellow. The party is attacked by cannibals with a trained T-Rex. The, um, the encounter takes place on a bridge over a river. At the beginning of this, uh, at the beginning of the encounter, one of the players joked about piranhas being in the river. So naturally, I added piranhas to the river. Uh, Bakken gets swallowed whole by the T-Rex, is taking damage from the inside, but he's still strong enough to cut his way out. Unfortunately for him, he falls into the piranha-infested river, falls unconscious due to the fall damage, and even when he wakes up due to an expended hero point, realizes it is very nearly impossible to swim upwards whilst wearing plate armor. A toast to the nearly dead Bakken. Mm. Ah, Quellen's Boast. This is another one of my favorite stories. So in my games, a recurring villain is a creature called the Dracatar. Right? It's a, it's a minotaur with dragon's wings and a breath weapon. And it's awesome. Uh, and the... The party, I used them so much that my players would joke about them constantly. And they were confident they could beat them at this point. So, uh, a Dracatar attacks the party. Unbeknownst to them, this is a very special Dracatar. It has class levels and magic. Uh, Quellen, one of the party's fighters, a snow elf, declares, Ho! Oh, it is merely a Dracatar! I can defeat it swiftly! So he charges the Dracatar, knowing that the Dracatar will get an attack of opportunity, a free attack on his charging form. The Dracatar heaves his mighty axe, and yelling a war cry, do I throw my dice and get a natural 20. I confirm the critical, and Quellen's character is cut, or rather, the character of Quellen is cut in half, sliced in twain. Sure, he was revived by clerical magic later, but... Uh, it was an amazing moment. A toast to Quellen. Mm. Next. Azazel and the Cobalt Wizards. Okay. Uh, in another, yet another Pathfinder campaign, the character of Azazel is a fetchling. He's a human who's been tainted by the Shadow Plane. Uh, he's playing a swashbuckler. So he fights with a rapier, and he has a pool of panache to call upon his powers. They're exploring a mine. They're going up against a death cult. The cult dedicated to a dead dragon and reviving it to life that it might destroy the empire the characters serve. Azazel, in all his glory, rounds the corner of the mine. They've been fighting off kobolds for what seems like hours in and out of character. The kobolds go down in one hit. It's amazing. They're still coming at them. Azazel rounds the corner when suddenly four tiny kobolds armed with only a wand do aim it at Azazel and declare magic missile bitch and the storm of magic missiles all targeted on one person caused Azazel to die due to some lucky rolls of the d4. A toast to Azazel. <clears throat> okay. Ah, the failure of the Isengard. Uh, there was a halfling cleric named Isen who had just joined up with our recent, or um, one of our more popular games. Uh, Isen was a tiny little halfling. The commanding officer had ordered a character by the name of Zemek to protect Isen no matter what. This is a lethal war against the undead. 
Uh, during the course of battle with the dead, the players get separated from Ison, who is then critically hit by a scythe, cut in half, and dies. Right? Uh, that was the second time that a player died the first session they joined us. And yet that player is still with us today. He was a great sport about it. Okay, a toast to Ison. Alright. Never split the party. This one happened yesterday. Um, so we started a new campaign. It's called I'm Not Gonna Die Here. Uh, I'll link in the description. I talk about it in another video. Um, so the players got themselves into a fight with the priesthood. Uh, and one of the injured priests runs out a back door. The building is on fire. The rest of the party are both running out the front door and dragging the unconscious bodies of the other corpses or of the other priests out of the building so that at the very least they won't be uh, guilty of murder. Uh, Richie, the character was named, decides that priest knows who we are. We need to stop him and runs out the back directly into a polearm held by the priest who had left it waiting in the alleyway and thought that he might grab it to protect himself against these murderous uh, urchins that attacked him. Richie runs straight into the point. Once again, the priest crits for times three damage, killing Richie instantly. A toast to Richie. Mm. All right, what's next? The Many Deaths of David. In the same campaign that Eisen and Stroud were in, uh, called Hungry Are the Dead, uh, there was a character named David who died four times. The player uh, had character death six times, but specifically David died and was brought back four times. All right, so the Many Deaths of David. Uh, stabbed by invisible halflings, uh, killed by a ghoul while sleeping, uh, backstabbed by a mind-controlled party member, shot in the head by a different mind-controlled party member on a different occasion, uh, and then there was an alternate reality version of him that was also killed by invisible halflings. It was amazing. All right, there is only one final death that I need to talk with you today. Uh, but first, I suppose I should drain this for David's many deaths. Okay, cool. So, uh, we had a player at our table. Let's call him uh, Locke. Uh, Locke was very distracted by technology all the time. This was quite a few years ago. And at the time, he was obsessed with a mobile game called um, uh, Bravest Warriors or something like that. It was some kind of a tap-based click, 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 and they would... Anyway, so he would play Bravest Warriors while we were uh, uh, while, while we were gaming, and sometimes he wouldn't pay attention. So we were in an extended dream sequence, and one of the other characters is immune to fire damage. We're at a volcano. Uh, Locke is, you know, he's playing on his phone. He's going, okay, 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 I'm paying attention. And, uh, one of the players throws the fire immune character into a volcano, uh, for reasons I can't remember. But it was important to the plot. Everybody knew what was happening, except for Locke. Locke, in his brilliance, first of all, did not verify who was being thrown into the volcano, and secondly, did not bother to listen when we said, okay, guys, we're throwing him in the volcano so he can do the thing. Locke comes from behind and bull rushes the fighter who threw his friend into the volcano. Uh, the fighter is taken by surprise and falls backwards. He falls into the volcano and dies. At this point, the other players, who have dealt with Locke being mind-controlled on more than one occasion before, go, oh, crap, he's mind-controlled. We need to kill him. And they fight and fight and fight. Locke manages to push like two more of them into the volcano. It's great until he eventually succumbs to his wounds. 
and then the dream sequence was over, and everybody was mad, and it was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to my 15-minute ramble on the many deaths of many player characters. Thank you very much for watching. Before I go, I would like to once again reiterate, I am not trying to kill player characters. These are deaths that are taken from a very lethal campaign and over the course of a few years and several campaigns. And this should just go to show you, because our group is still together and functioning today, that player character death doesn't matter all that much. If anything, it can lead to an interesting new story, as we'll see happening in I'm Not Going to Die Here. Fellow players, thank you very much. Have a fantastic evening.